this is sky. So I realize that it's been over 10 years since I started following the blood type diet and three years for the genotype diet. And I'm 40 now. People keep thinking I'm 27. Uh, younger if I get enough sleep. And I was rereading the genotype diet book last night. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny because I was just writing out on the uh, Facebook group about, yeah, I don't feel that I'm, uh, I'm 40, but I don't feel 40. I, I do feel like I'm younger and have energy and I'm spry and that I, uh, that I do have strength. Uh, I am experiencing the wear and tear of a hard rock and roll lifestyle. But otherwise, uh, and even then, I, I recover. I will get better. Uh, I... So I'm trying to think, why, so why am I writing this, or why am I uh, posting this video? Uh, to you know, promote and share the diet. Um, uh, and of course to uh, you know, detract from the naysayers who are like, oh, it's fake or doesn't work or whatever. And it's always interesting because uh, try it and see what happens. Um, and, and they keep posting this or keep linking to this uh, study. And if you read it, you realize like, that's not a study. It's not anything. They didn't do, they didn't even try following or testing to see if the dive will work. Um, the, I think it's a presentation of the diet that is a challenge for people uh, and, and journalists even to cover and present. The, it, it's, I was even reading a uh, five diets and different models to follow. And um, Miranda Kerr uh, was mentioned uh, with the blood type diet and for Vogue magazine. And the journalist, um, yeah, just did not do a good job of presenting the diet. Just you know, was talking about beans and this and that. And it's like, huh, what? Um, so it kind of makes you wonder like, well, who was she talking to, or where did she get the research for the diet? Um, because the thing to remember is that uh, the person who follows the diet, they may not, you know, they may grasp some of the concepts of the science, but when it comes to presenting that science or explaining the science, they may not be the best. Uh, for myself, I have a degree in English, I've been trained in public affairs, public relations, so I try to uh, understand what is the core message, what is the core pitch that you're trying to get across to people, like what, what are people interested in, you know, understanding and learning about. And for that, it's simply, you know, what is your diet? Eliminate these certain foods. That's simple. Uh, and as a result, I, I, you know, to, to people should really get the idea like, oh, so I don't have to start doing something weird or only eat this or only do that. Like, no, no, no. Just look at a food list and say, oh, I should eat those, not those. And go with that. Um, the, so some of my own personal experiences with uh, the way I look at diet is it's cultural because people are born and raised with this idea of in our household this is what we eat this is what people enjoy uh, this is what's common and so that's what uh, you know the comfort food that's the food I was raised on that's the food that I'm used to you know I ate this growing up I can keep eating this when I'm an adult I can keep eating this when I get old I keep coming across elderly people, retired people, and 
they have to radically change their diet. You know, every doctor tells them, change your diet, can't eat that anymore, you can't do this or that. Yes, there are the, the oddball stories like, well, this person drinks a thing of whiskey every day, or this person drinks, a, you know, Dr. Pepper uh, every day. And it's like, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> so, but what else were they eating? What else were they consuming and doing that uh, kept them healthy enough that they can keep going? And at the same time, you have to look and realize, well, the person's alive, but how alive are they? What are they doing with, their, with themselves? You know, can the person, are they cognizant? Are they enjoying their golden years? Are they uh, chained to a bed by medication and infirmity? So I think those are things to keep in mind and ideas of, you know, uh, like science will not let you die. So you have to think of and take care of yourself and you know, what's happening. Uh, and even to this morning, I'm listening to uh, NPR radio, National Public Radio, and they are talking about how uh, learning new languages, old people, elderly people, uh, will learn new languages because that helps in fighting dementia uh, and keeping the brain elastic and you know, going. The, the research on green zones, uh, which is, you know, uh, a bowl of beans a day and being active and you know, having a purpose. Um, the, you know, so green zones are a place where people live a long time. Uh, what else? Okay, so personal examples. Uh, well, I was substitute teaching in a fall, in a small, small farming community, uh, predominantly Hispanic. Uh, you know, but it's the town, so it's not the, you know, not it's actual farmers with people who work on farms. Uh, you know, possibly, you know, the parents do, or, or um, you know, like they're, they're related to one of the industries. And what I noticed is you see the same, like, you know, I'm looking down the roll call with the machine. I know these kids are related either by the name or by looking at the kids and because uh, you see the face uh, you know, certain facial features that you know okay that, those guys are obviously related and but you see the skinny kid you see the tubby kid you see the hyper kid you see the, you know, the low key kid and you know that these kids are eating the same food at home same diets um, uh, it's you know, Hispanic culture is uh, tends to involve you know family get-togethers uh, on the weekends, but also like you know just extended family like you know cousins you know they will go to the cousin's house to uh, you know, eat meals and so you know the family support network. So that was an indication that okay something about the diet is different. When I was in the military in the army, the comment uh, early on was. Hey, I'm looking at these uh, guys who have been in for five years or so, and they look portly. They they look tubby. What's going on? Why is it that we are working out every day? We have these physical fitness standards that we have to maintain. You know, so people are motivated to exercise. People are motivated to stay in shape. Um, why do these guys got uh, guts? Why do these guys, you know, this and that? Uh, and then on top of also. They have access to free healthcare you know, because you know, keep the fighting force fit. You know, as soon as you get injured, go to the doctor and get that you know, get yourself taken care of. Um, so then you hear the stories, and it's regularly you hear the stories of uh, career soldiers, people who've been in 20 years or more. And they die of heart attacks, uh, heart disease, or uh, stroke, or some other uh, disease, and almost always related to some sort of run and exercise, which is like that, that was just a triggering event. That you know, you know, everything was going bad, and just oh, they had this triggering event, which you know, the body can handle it anymore. Um, the and especially because career soldiers, because these guys would go to advanced leadership schools, which is stressful.
because these are schools uh, that are basically the culmination of a career. These people have gone their whole lives, their whole career. They're at this point where, okay, this is the next level. You can accomplish this a few more years and you can retire at a much healthier, comfortable, uh, whatever. And, well, uh, they heal over. They're, they're dying. And it's like, why? Why would that happen? How could that happen? Um, so, yeah, just those personal examples. So that's part of what got me keen to, all right, I gotta, I think I'm gonna try these diets because, or try this diet of blood type and see what happens. Um, within two days, cleared up my acne. A few weeks, my, or uh, two days, my insomnia went away. A few weeks, my acne cleared up. Lost all this weight. Uh, just, just way in weird parts of your body. That's uh, that's really interesting. Uh, and then, yeah, not getting sick and don't feel stress. Your mind feels clear. You're more focused. So the yeah. So I'm a blood type A positive uh, warrior genotype, and I'm reading through the descriptions of it. I'm like. Oh yeah, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that that is me. So, and uh, I'm also an ESFJ. So I'm kind of curious how that uh, lines up. So yeah. Anyways, try to check out the blood type diet and the genotype diet.